This is Dr. Weich Coleman, and this is video three of six in the basic cataract series. This segment is just on hydrodissection. So this is 10 random cases with hydrodissection. This is three minutes and 50 seconds of actual case time. So it's about 35 seconds per hydrodissection. First of all, I use the chain cannula. I'm a big fan of the chain cannula. It can be done in a similar fashion with the straight cannula, but the chain is really nice at unzipping especially under the surgical wound. It's very important with femto laser cases because you can sort of unzip the cortex, which is sort of sticky at the area where the rexus was cut at the free edge. I think with um, a standard case, it's not as important. One of the things that I like to point out always with hydrodissection is I really think it's about pressure and not volume. Volume creates blooping of the lens, causes iris prolapse. Pressure in waves gives you a, a, a good, complete hydrodissection. And remember with hydrodissection, we're really trying to separate the cortex from the capsule, uh, not the nucleus from the cortex. Many people value hydrodelineation, which would be a, a fluid wave between the nucleus and the cortex, or the golden ring sign. Everybody wants to see the golden ring sign. My view is I don't want to see the golden ring sign. That's the, that's the one thing I definitely don't want to see. Sometimes you do, and it's okay, but I think that it makes you more likely to end up with the nucleus out and a big epinuclear shell that's, that's a little bit dangerous to get with the FACO and a little bit inefficient to get with the IA, so it can slow you down. So I'm looking for a definitive hydrodissection. When I go into the eye, I'm getting just under the capsular leaflet, the anterior capsular leaflet. I'm lifting up slightly so that I am definitively in the space between the capsule and the cortex. And once I've lifted up slightly, then I'm giving it a pulse. I'm pulsing with low volume and high pressure, pulses of pressure, and I'm watching for the fluid wave to come across my red reflex. If it's incomplete on one side and I have a difficult time doing that, then I'll rotate to the other side. Usually my wave has been complete. I usually go into the right first. Right or left doesn't really matter. It seems easier to the right to me. And I'll get a complete fluid wave there. And then on the other side, there's very little flow, not a lot of flow of BSS a low flow rate, and I'm just trying to unzip at that point the cortex from the other areas of the capsular rexus that the fluid wave didn't separate. So you'll see a pulse here. I'm having a little trouble getting the fluid wave to come across. I'm pulsing, and that last pulse got it, and I think that I get lifted up a little bit more on the anterior capsular leaflet, and that gave a space for that fluid wave to come around in. Remember, hydrosection is not a great idea. If you have a white cataract, you can blow out the posterior capsule. Uh, that's a whole different section, and I'll try to post a video on that later. If you're using a straight cannula, it works just the same. You can go in a couple of different spots. And I'll also try to do a video later on blooping the lens. You know, I always say that I've blooped it and regretted it a lot more times than I've gone to divide and conquer and wished I would have blooped it. So if somebody's not really young with a very soft lens, I'm probably going to avoid a bloop, and I'm probably going to go straight to a divide and conquer, because you can, you can always switch from a uh, divide and conquer to a bloop, but it's really hard to go the other way once the lens is out of the bag. And a lot of times you'll get a pretty dense lens in the anterior chamber. It's real tough to handle. So in most cases, I'm going to go with a straight divide and conquer, even if it's a little bit soft, because I'd rather err on that side and the side of caution. So the next video coming up is going to be nucleus extraction. So everybody stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.